I'm Michelle Steele. And I am Annette Caps, and we're here to share the word with you today. I'm so excited about the focus of today's teaching because we're talking about the tongue, a creative force, God's yeah. creative force that has transformed my life, my life yeah. as a believer the victory that I'm able to walk in has uh, come from a lot of the teachings that are in that book that your dad taught. Well, this book has sold at least a million copies. I mean, wow. literally. Wow. And um, when you told me that we were going to be talking about this book today, I decided to read it again. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't read it recently because after all, I know everything in the book, right? Yeah, right. But anyway, I thought, well, I'll just go through and pick a few things out that I think we should talk about. And um, I've got bookmarks. I, I started turning down every page. <laughs> yes. I'm like, well, I can't turn down every page in this book. But wow, the revelation, the revelation in this book is something else. Anyway. The this, revelations that God brought into your dad, into the body of Christ through mm -hmm. your father, were not just for your father. Mm -hmm. They were for us right. and not just for his generation. God never intended for them to be brought into the earth for a moment and then to dissipate. He intends for the truths of our confession, faith as a seed, the, uh, the authority of our words. He intended for that to be gaining momentum in our lives. And so yes. that's why we're here today, so that we yes. can uh, refresh if it's something that you maybe haven't, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not a new concept to you, but you haven't heard it in a while. And then for those of you who don't understand the authority of your words and the, the creative force that's released through the words that you speak, this is for you today. You're going to get so much out of this. Yes. And I like, um, when I started looking through the book, I liked the same statement that you did. God's word that is conceived in your heart and formed by the tongue and spoken out of your own mouth becomes a spiritual force releasing the ability of God within you. Praise God. Woo! I mean, that's, that's a statement you could just meditate on for days. Yes, and your father spoke that all the time. If you listen to different messages, and I listen to a lot mm -hmm. of his messages, he, he would just include it. It wasn't necessarily the, the main statement, but he would, he would... So that was in him, and it was something that the Lord revealed to him. Yes. Um, you know, some of the most powerful messages are people... Speaking from personal experience. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can talk about a lot of things. Like I could talk about aquaculture today or this. It's something I know a little bit about. But, I mean, it, it has no real heart impact. But learning that your words have power and God created us that way. Because God created the entire world and the universe, everything it's in existence through his word. Yes. And it says the word of his power. Not the power of his word, the word of his power. Yes. He said, light be, and it sprang into existence and began to create. And if we're created in the image and likeness of God, how could we possibly think that our words don't mean anything? I mean, listen to people talk. You know, they say, oh, I never can do anything right. Well, well, this place is just going to hell in a handbasket, you know. We'll probably get divorced. I mean, people are destroying their homes, their marriages with their words. People are destroying their children with their words. People are destroying each other with their words. And then there's what the Bible tells us to do, and that's to use His Word through our mouths as creative power to right wrongs, to bring order into chaos, to yes. bring peace in the midst of the storm. Yes. And you know, I had to laugh to something that you had said earlier before we started about Jesus speaking peace to the storm. 
You know, most Christians, and they're in the middle of the storm, instead of saying, peace, be still, in the name of Jesus, they're going, we're going to die, we're going to die. <laughs> Adding to the problem. Right. Yeah, by, by saying what they feel. And uh, that's the problem. Most people, people have their, their speaker plugged up to their feeler. Instead of their speaker oh, plugged up to their believer. That's good. We need to be speaking from what we believe, not, not based on what we see, because what we see is not final authority. What we believe is going to come into the situation and change what we see if we bring it out through the mouth. And that's what he said. God's word conceived in the heart. Yes. It has to be in the heart, then formed by the tongue and spoken out. It's Which is what he said, the Lord said to your dad, my people are, I told my people they could have what they say, but they're saying what they have. See, yes. they're connecting their speaker to their sight yes. instead of their believer. Yes, what's going on in the physical world. And what they don't realize is everything in this physical world is created by the unseen realm. And you can't see words when they're coming out of your mouth. Right. But that's how you're creating. And I want to give you a little bit of the background. You know, this is not a religious book, so to speak. My dad was bound by what he learned from religion. And we went through some really bad times as a family. I was young, but I do remember some of it. And my dad was a farmer, as was his father, as was his father. And cotton farmer from Arkansas. And I was raised on the farm. And so that was the means of livelihood. And my dad started farming actually a senior year of high school. Oh. And he was a six, he, he'd skip, you know, he'd go in the morning and the afternoon, he'd go to the farm and start plowing. And um, he was successful for a long period of time. And then something happened. He made an investment and with a Christian businessman, <laughs> It's one of those things, well, they're Christians, and, you know, no, you got to listen to your spirit. He didn't listen to his spirit. And he made an investment. He made a pledge uh, to be good for the money that was borrowed, and the thing went under, and he lost all the money, and then he was indebted to pay off all this man's loan. Wow. Now, this is not a good place to be. I don't know about you, but I've been pretty upset, to say the least, but what... The effect it had on my dad was he felt like he'd failed. Have, has anybody out there ever had that feeling? You feel yes. like you failed, you feel like you didn't measure up. So because of that, he started speaking very negatively and thinking negatively. And the next thing you knew, farming, which he'd always been successful at, he started having problems on the farm. He started having problems with the seed. He started having Problems with the, the rain didn't come. He'd make bad decisions, you know. He'd buy the wrong this, the wrong that. He'd plant the seed too deep because he thought this would happen. He'd plant it too shallow, he thought that would happen. And then the prices went down. He'd sell when it was cheap instead of when it was high. So he started saying things like, I can't do anything right. It doesn't matter what I do, I'll, I'll fail. I mean, he, you know, he heard these, he'd go sit down there with all the other farmers. They go, yeah, well, I remember my uncle saying, I said, man, if we don't get some rain soon, he said, I'm going to have robbed the bank, talking about the loan he had at the bank. And uh, the other guy said, well, I'll tell you what, if we don't get some rain soon, I've already robbed the bank. <laughs> so, you know, the negativity. Yes. People say, oh, that doesn't mean anything. It's just talk. It's just the way people talk. But Jesus said, you'll give account for every foolish and idle word you speak. Yes. Did, well, did Jesus lie? Did Jesus not care what you say? Did Jesus not say anything about words? Did James not say anything about words? He said, the tongue is an unruly evil. Yes. And it, it turns the whole ship <laughs> and sets on fire the course of nature. Now, I always read that is the DNA. Even if you've got good DNA by your words, you can set those little things off that cause it to turn and for you to get sick. Like 
my uncle had that disease and yeah. my great uncle and my grandfather died of that disease. And so I'll probably will. And so those what words they, go yeah. into your body and send a signal to, yes. to submit to that. Yes. Yeah. So he just, he kept creating more and more negativity and it got worse and worse and worse. And finally, the Spirit of God began to deal with him and then began to speak to him. And this is one of the many pages that I have marked in there. But he said, I remember one morning I was praying. I said, Father, I've prayed and it is not working out. <laughs> it's not working out for me. God spoke inside my spirit just as plain. What are you doing? I said, well, I'm praying. Don't you know what I'm doing? You're God. <laughs> I'm praying. He said, no, you're not. You are complaining. He wasn't, and then, he, then God said, who told you it's not working out? And he said, it shook him up and for a minute. He thought for a minute. And finally, he said, well, I guess the devil said that. Then he spoke into my spirit some things that totally transformed my life. He said, I would appreciate it. This is God. Yes. I would appreciate it if you would quit telling me what the devil said. And so my dad had been praying all this time, and many of you have been doing the same thing, praying and complaining, telling God it's not working out, telling God what the devil told you, what the news told you. Yes, what the report of the, the enemy, what's the report of the situation, what your symptoms are saying. Yes. Yeah. And so God began to get through to him. Yes. You know, sometimes we can be real hard-headed about stuff if we're not especially if you're bound by religion. You know, I found that people that are uh, from the church sometimes have a much harder time believing that your words have power and that you shouldn't be going about doing foolish speaking than the outside world. The outside world seems to go, oh, you know, that really is true. Even psychology has proven that out. Yes. So anyway, God began to give him this revelation on the power of the tongue and you know, if you want to know if there's anything in the Bible about words, maybe you're out there, you say, oh, the Bible doesn't talk about that. Uh, get the book or get your Bible, get a concordance, go online, look up how many times the tongue and word, were your words are in the Bible. Yes. About speaking. God designed us to speak His word and His will in the earth. Yes. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is it God's will? Is it God's will for the earth to be the way it is today? I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> is it God's will for me to be living the way I'm living in lack or in anxiety? Is that God's will? I don't think so. The Bible speaks that Jesus came to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. So finding God's will, and then my dad began to speak it. And I brought this along with me. He went, he said, well, I'm going to look for scriptures that agree with God. I'm going to quit agreeing with the devil, and I'm going to agree with God, so I'm going to find those scriptures. So what he did is he wrote down some scriptures, and he'd take it with him and put it in a shirt pocket when he'd go to the field, plant cotton or whatever, or when he'd go to the gin or whatever, and he'd stop, and he'd, he'd take these out. And I've had people that have gotten this little book right here, and they said, oh, I've read it, I've read it. No, that's not what this is meant to it's do. You don't read it. You've got to say it out loud. Let the vibratory frequency of your words come out of your mouth when you say it. Yes. You say, well, it just doesn't seem real to me. If you keep saying it, the seed of the anointing of God in this will come up in you, and one day you will speak it in power. And here's what it said. I am the body of Christ, and Satan has no power over me. I overcome evil with good. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will fear no evil, for you, Lord, are with me. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. I am far from oppression, and fear does not come near me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, for, for my righteousness is of the Lord. Now, when he first started reading those, he told the Lord, he said, you know, God, I feel like I'm lying because I don't believe any of that. <laughs> he said, I don't believe any of it. I feel like I'm lying. And you know what God spoke to his heart? He said, son, 
How could you lie saying what I said? Yes, I love that. Oh, glory to God. And I'm so glad that the, the, the reason behind this revelation, because we, we've all been in that place where we've opened our mouths and said what we felt like or said what it looked like. It's just that natural human reaction, but we're not natural humans. No. We're born again. That's right. Made in the image of God with the power of words. Yes. Yes. And so the fact that your father had spoken the negative words that set even what he was skilled at farming and that he had always been successful at, it turned the direction of it. Yes. Just like the book of James says, with your tongue, you can turn the direction just like the rudder of a ship can turn that huge ship. He yes. turned his whole farming industry yes. in the wrong direction. Yes. But then the word of God in his mouth, how long did it take him quoting the word like this, just with that piece of paper with it on that list listed out for him to turn his situation around? Well, it took months, but here's the thing. When you're doing this and when you're confessing, this this little piece of paper turned into this little book with the same confessions in it. But when you're confessing these things, I have given, it is given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, do men give unto my bosom. It is true unto me according to the word. When you're saying that, people say, well, I don't feel like like that's true, like my dad said. They say, well, I'm not sure I believe that. That's the point. You keep saying the word until it creates something on the inside of you. Yes. This, the word is creative power. God's word is creative power. It is creative and it creates. Now, the first place it creates is on the inside of you. That's important. This is real important because a lot of people say, Well, I took that little book and I said it 10 Mm -hmm. times in one day and nothing happened. Nothing happened. And they think it's just the saying and one, it's the saying in itself is not the end end of all. It's saying is a part of it, but the speaking it into your part, into your, into your spirit, into your heart is the part that makes it alive in you and puts the faith in your words. That's right. It's cre- this is the part where it seems like is confession. It is speaking forth the word. Faith comes by hearing. Yes. Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Well, do I, do I hear the preacher when he reads or he or she reads? Yes. Do I hear the word when it's read? Yes. But you need to participate and hear yourself saying and speaking. Yes. This is not for your mother, your mother-in-law, your sister, your brother, or your boss. People, you're not saying it for other people to hear you or convince them that you're healed or that you're the righteousness of God. That's not the purpose of it. That is not the purpose. When you misunderstand the purpose, you get all confused. Yes. So the purpose of this book is to put the Word of God in you, hear yourself speaking and saying the Word of God. And then at some point, faith builds in your heart. And it's like, whoa, I am the body of Christ and Satan has no power over me. Wow, it becomes real. But it only becomes real after you've planted all these seeds in your heart. Yes. You know, I just put in a garden. And... I put the seeds in. I didn't go back at the next day and go, well, there's nothing there. Disc it up. You know, I planted the spinach and carrots out there, and I just knew it needed water. It needed some sunshine. It needed a little bit of heat coming on it. And it would begin to sprout up. And that's what happens. The Bible, the Word of God is a seed that is planted in your heart. Didn't Jesus talk about that, Michelle? Yes, yes. Didn't he say something about seeds and seeds that fall along by the wayside and seeds that are among the thorns? And then there's a seed that falls into good ground. Good ground. And it springs up and, and brings forth. <laughs> what was he talking about? He was talking about the words. The Word of God. Seeds are representing words. Words are seeds. And so... 
let me just throw this in. Yeah, you can say, you can say something stupid like, "Oh yeah, that just tickles me to death," and no, you're not going to, uh, you know, listen, next time something funny happens, fall over dead. But those are seeds of what? Is that a seed of life or a seed of death? Death, destruction. So, confessing the word. This is what changed my dad. Yes. It's what turned him around. He renewed his mind by the word. Speaking it, hearing it, saying it, started changing his mind. Now, the funny thing, he t I think he tells about it in this book. He talks about then that this farm came available that he wanted to buy. And they called him up, said, Charles, would you like to buy this farm? And he said, yes. And so he went home and told my mom. He, she said, well, what, 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 what? He said, yeah, they offered to sell me the farm. Well, what'd you tell them? I told them I'd buy it. She said, what are you going to use for money? I didn't have any money. And he said, now this is after programming himself with yes. the word of God. He said, money is no problem. And, and mother set the course. Mother went. <laughs> she didn't dare say anything, and his eyes were big. It's like, whoa. See, because now it had been in his heart. Now what came out of his mouth was a commanding word. Yes, yes. But you can't speak commanding words, and you can't just do all of that until you get the word in your heart. It was in his heart, and it came out of his mouth, and it didn't it even surprise him that he had said it. I think he as said boldly. his. I think he said his eyes got this big. <laughs> Money is no problem. And as it played out, and and the different steps that he needed to get the money that declaration of money is no problem came back to him and held him to that course that's right during during it all as it played out that's right and that's what we need to understand is the word of god is creating something in us and then it comes out through our faith-filled words yeah that's and that. those faith-filled words begin to turn the situation and cause Things like your father's farming, it turned back. He turned it bad and yes. with negative words. But when he began speaking the word, I believe at one time I heard him say it was maybe like 12 months or 13 months to turn it completely around yeah. to come out of the debt that had been caused by that yes. negative uh, decision that he'd made. Yeah. So the turning was a turning of the word of God. That, but it would not have turned without it first getting in his heart and then secondly, coming out of his mouth. The tongue is like a rudder, James says in cha James chapter 3, that turns the whole ship. It's yes. just a little bitty, but it turns that whole ship around. Yes. It takes a while. If you see one of those big ships, it takes a while, but it turns everything. And you can turn your life around with the power of your words. Yes. And that's what we want you to, to grab a hold of in these teachings as we're going to be teaching this week, next week as well. And this book, The Tongue, A Creative Force, is a book that will help you see these things that we've talked about and so much more and how you can put it to work in your life, how you can put the word in your heart. It's not just you making positive statements, it's you making God statements, the, what God has already stated and promised in His Word. We've got so much more for you. Stay tuned. Wow, what a great program. We all need to be reminded of the importance of our words and how they create for us, for good or for not. This book we've been discussing today is called The Tongue, A Creative Force. And I'm offering this power-packed 193-page book and including our three best-selling mini-books for only $19. And that includes shipping. That's a great deal. You will receive four books, The Tongue of Creative Force, God's Creative Power Will Work for You, God's Creative Power for Healing, God's Creative Power for Finances, and I want to throw in one of our pamphlets called Words, Change, or Establish Circumstances, 
or something like words transmit images, we'll send you our, one of our latest pamphlets. That's all for $2,500, four books for $19. Call 877-396-9400 or go to caps.tv. Hello everyone, we are so excited about what God's doing in your life and in the ministry of Faith Builders. Michelle and I wanted to take a moment today and talk to you about partnership. And I know there's a lot of talk about partnering with ministries and uh, that word partnership is used a lot, but it's a spiritual principle. Yes. And I want you to look in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Uh, very often we go right to verse 19, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. But it starts back in verse 15. And Paul says, now you Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. The word communicated in the Greek means to give or to share in all good things. The Amplified uses the term, no, no church opened up a credit and debit account with me or with this ministry except you. Yes. So Paul says that this church at Philippi entered into a giving and receiving relationship with him. As they gave into his ministry, they received. Now, the easy thing to look and see there is that that's financial, but the aspect of it is there's a spiritual connotation as well. When you get involved in partnering with a ministry and you open up that credit and debit account, he says God will supply all of your need yes. according to his riches in glory. His riches of anointing, his riches of glory, his riches of spiritual victory, and his riches of physical finances. I wanna encourage you today, if you've not yet partnered with us, I wanna encourage you to do so because the blessing of the Lord will begin to function in your life in unprecedented man ways because you enter into this account with us as we spread the gospel. God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership. This is Pastor Philip Steele, and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church, right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us, and until then, God bless you.